Hi. Today we're going to be talking about high performance database queries in WordPress. And for some reason, we're doing this before the coffee break. Sorry. Uh, I would not have set up the schedule that way. This is going to be, uh, we're really going to geek out today. This is, this is going to be, uh, I think, a fun talk. Normally, I like to kind of shoot just above people's heads. Today, I'm going to maybe shoot a little bit higher. I really want everyone to come out of this with some, with some new knowledge. Um, I also want to warn everyone that even though it's you know late 2018 and this is a WordCamp presentation, we're not going to talk about Gutenberg. So you've been warned. You were hoping for talk on Gutenberg. This is not the room. Uh, so a little bit about me. I'm a partner at Alley. We're a full service digital agency. We're one of the WordPress.com VIP uh, partner agencies. Uh, we're hiring, it's an important note. Uh, we're a distributed company, so you don't have to be any one place to, uh, to work for us. And uh, we build some of the biggest and most complicated WordPress sites in the world. So uh, this is a talk on mostly lessons that I've learned the hard way. OK, jumping right in. Uh, and this is from the book, High Performance MySQL, third edition. It's an electrifying read. Uh, what makes a database query fast or slow? Uh, I really liked the way that this book put it. The most basic reason a query doesn't perform well is because it's working with too much data. Let that sink in. It sounds you know, pretty basic, but it, it actually explains a lot. Uh, I'm not suggesting that when somebody's complaining about the speed of a database query, you delete most of their database. That probably wouldn't go over well. There are other ways to get MySQL to work with less data. This goes on to say, some queries just have to sift through a lot of data and can't be helped. That's unusual, though. Most bad queries can be changed to access less data. So if the most basic reason a query doesn't perform well is because it's working with too much data, what is the most basic way to speed up a database query? Reduce the amount of data that the database has to read. Which brings us to our first topic, indexes. This is also from High Performance MySQL 3rd edition. I promise this is not a book report. This is my last excerpt from this book. So uh, just a footnote, specifically B tree indexes. That's the type of index that MySQL uses most of the time. Indexes reduce the amount of data the server has to examine. It's so simple, right? We need MySQL to look at, to examine less data. Indexes do that. They also help the server avoid sorting and avoid using temporary tables, and they turn random I.O. into sequential I.O. We'll dive into all this a little bit more as we go. Uh, indexes do have some downsides you should be aware of. Indexes significantly affect the speed of write operations. If you have many indexes on a table, a write can take 10, 20 times as long. Most of the time, that's not a big deal because you're only doing writes for a very small segment of your users, people who in the WordPress world are using the WordPress admin. Uh, indexes significantly affect storage space, the storage space of your database server, the memory usage of the database server, and indexes aren't altogether flexible. Uh, a really good index is going to be very well targeted to specific uses. Uh, we'll look at some indexes in WordPress next, and we'll, we'll get a better sense of, of really what that means. But at the end of the day, you can't just index everything. If you index everything in a database table, then the index is as big as the table, and now you've not reduced the amount of data that MySQL has to look at in order to get you your information. Uh, so next, let's look at some of the indexes in WordPress. I'm just going to focus on three tables that relate to querying for posts. Uh, so the first is the WP post table. We have, uh, let's see if I can get my cursor here, if that's obvious. So we have the primary index, which is just on the ID field. There's the post name index on the post name field. This is primarily used for, um, for querying for posts by, by a rewrite rule through your pretty permalinks. 
there's the type status date index, which is a multi-column index that indexes the post type, the post status, the post date, and the ID. That order is actually significant. Um, but this is the index that uh, is, is most commonly used on front end queries. Anytime you're looking at a list of posts, basically, you're going to probably end up using this index. There are two other indexes on the table, post parent for uh, generating hierarchical queries, uh, getting like uh, children of a, of a page, for instance. And then there's uh, an index on post author for the uh, author archives and used a bunch of other places too. Next, looking at the WP post meta table, there's uh, again the, the primary index on the meta ID field. We never actually use the meta ID in WordPress. There's an index on post ID and an index on the meta key. Uh, those two are, are super important. What's also noteworthy here is what's missing, which is that there's not an index on the meta value column. We will talk quite a bit more about that later. Uh, next, the WP term relationships table. The primary index is a multi-column index on object ID and term taxonomy ID. Uh, this is, uh, so object ID is uh, post ID. Technically, taxonomy terms can be related to more than just posts. Bet you didn't know that. Uh, so object ID, think of it as synonymous with post ID. And um, this, is, this is the main index that we end up using here. And then there's also an index on term taxonomy ID. Uh, and term taxonomy ID is a little bit of a, of a relic. Uh, nowadays, term taxonomy ID and term ID are the same thing. Uh, a brief word on joins. So if you've ever spent a lot of time in a database server uh, and looking at database queries, you might have the idea in your head that joins are bad. Are they always bad? No, they're actually not. But they certainly can be. Uh, joins have to be well crafted. Join order is important, as is proper indexing, specifically indexing on the columns that form the join. Furthermore, many joins in one query can cause a lot of CPU overhead. Uh, this kind of pokes at the, the edge of the scope of this presentation, but under the hood, the way that MySQL does joins is with nested loops. So when you have a join, MySQL has a nested loop where it, it takes, goes row by row on one table, and for each of those, it loops through the other table. So with each join, you have to do another set of nested loops. This can create a lot of CPU overhead. Uh, if your database server is also warming your house, I guess that would be a good thing. Uh, so next, let's talk about very specific WordPress queries. Uh, starting with archive queries, this is, this is like if your home page is showing your, say, 10 most recent posts, this is going to be, that's going to be an example of, of one of these queries. Um, but basically, anytime you're looking at a list of posts in WordPress, it's some, some form of, of an archive query. Uh, and unless it's a custom query, it's going to filter by post type, filter by post status, and then order by date. So remember that index we were looking at, the type status date index? This is where that comes into play. Can everyone read this okay? Cool. Uh, so diving into this query, specifically we have, um, so just ignore the SQL calc found rows. We're selecting the post ID. So this, is, this was cribbed from a, a home page. I set up a, a, a WordPress install on my laptop. I installed, I or added, <clears throat> not manually, I promise you, 100,000 posts to it. And uh, I pulled a bunch of queries from the site as they were running. Uh, also, just ran a bunch of time, pulled out the averages of, of how long these queries took, and, and we'll, we'll dive through them. So uh, on the home page, this query was being run. Select the post ID where the post type is post, the post status is either publish or private. Uh, private is used here because I was signed in on the site. Uh, the you know. A, a typical visitor would only be looking at published posts. And uh, then ordering by the post date. So when I went to my site, which has 100,000 posts on it, this query took 73 milliseconds. It's like that, that, that. It's very fast. But at the same time, it's 
kind of not that fast. We want database queries to be like one millisecond or a singular number of milliseconds. So why is this so slow? Everything about this query is actually crafted really well. Let's, let's go back to it. So uh, think about the index. It was a multi-column index, type, status, date, and then ID was the last column in that index. <clears throat> Every field that we're looking at in this query is in the index. So MySQL doesn't even have to touch the database table itself when running this query. This is why WordPress queries for the post ID. Even though when we're generating that page, we need more than just the ID. We need the post title. We need the post name to generate the permalink. We need the, you know, the excerpt, maybe. Um, even though we, we need all that, when WordPress runs this query, it's just querying for the ID. That's going to keep this query running nice and fast. And then we'll use the ID later to inflate the rest of that post object to get the rest of the information. So uh, why is this query not as fast as we really ideally like it to be? We can do an explain on it. If you've never done an explain on a database query, it's pretty simple. Just add the word explain before whatever query you're trying to run. And MySQL will give you some information about what's going on. We're going to skip most of this. It's outside the scope of, of this talk. Uh, maybe if I had longer than 40 minutes. But, uh, we're going to jump right down to extra. We're using where, using index. These are really good things. And then we're using file sort. Uh, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a flag. And ultimately, that tells us what's really going on here. Uh, MySQL also says that it had to examine 49,702 rows. I promise there are 100,000 rows there. It, either that's all that MySQL had to look at to get things sorted, or uh, it's guesstimating, which MySQL is pretty bad at like, doing guesstimates. Um, so it, using file sort means that uh, MySQL had to, I'm going to try to stay closer to the mic so that my voice gets picked up on video. Um, MySQL had to sort these results. So when it ran this query, it got 100,000 results. Let's go back up to the query. At the end, we're saying limit 0 to 10. So give me the first 10 posts. We only want 10 posts. MySQL has to look at 100,000. Again, it's, it's still working just within the index. So this is pretty fast. But it has to look at 100,000. Then it has to sort them all by date. Then it takes the first 10, and it throws away the next 99,990. So if, uh, if we were to remove the order in the limit from that query, that query takes four milliseconds. It also returns 100,000 results that are not sorted, but it only takes four milliseconds. So that's more what we would expect to see uh, out of a database query like this. So we, we know unequivocally that what's taking time here is sorting the results. So can we? have PHP sort the results instead of let MySQL do it. If that's what's taking the majority of the time, can we do that ourselves? I know you asked that. I didn't ask that. But I'm glad you asked. Uh, for academic purposes, I try to do this. Now remember, if we're going to sort by date, now we can't just select the ID. We have to select both the ID and the date. We have to pull that all down into PHP. So between the ID and the date, times 100,000, it's probably like one or two megabytes of data that we have to sift through. We have to convert those dates into a format that we can easily sort, or we can just sort them as strings. And that works fine, too. Uh, and then slice off the, the top 10. Just to deliver that one to two megabytes over a local connection, this is all happening on my laptop. The database server's on my laptop. The web server's on my laptop. Just to deliver the data takes longer than 73 milliseconds. So sorry, we doubted you, MySQL. You're actually doing a very good job, better than we could do. Uh, all told, it took about 14 times longer to do that sorting and, and slicing myself. Uh, OK, so we'll, we'll get back to, to the archive queries a little bit later. Uh, let's move on to taxonomy queries. So a typical taxonomy query uses index columns. It uses a single join, and the join happens on index columns. Uh, 
So looking at this query, it, it looks very similar to the last one that we looked at, except that we now have a join on the WP term relationships table. Uh, we're joining on the, the post ID matching the, the object ID of, of term relationships. And then in our where clause, we're looking for uh, posts that are in the term taxonomy ID of two. So all 100,000 of my posts are in this one taxonomy term. This query takes about 200 milliseconds to run. So quite a bit, quite a bit slower than the last one. What if we were to run multiple taxonomies in one query? So now we have two joins instead of one. Uh, and then in the where clause, we, we have the same, uh, the same clause for term taxonomy in, in ID2. There are 100,000 posts in that term. And then there's a term with, this, with the other tables join uh, tt one that term taxonomy ID in nine. So uh, in that term with the ID of nine, there's only one post. So we've increased the complexity of this query. The last one was 200 milliseconds. Any guesses on how long this query is going to take? No guesses? It takes about a millisecond. Why is that? It's because my school doesn't have to do any sorting here. It doesn't really need to do any work at all. The, so taxonomy queries, especially when you're working with large data sets on large sites, they get a bad rap. They're actually not so bad because the way that the query is crafted, every single column that we're looking at here is indexed. We're only working with indexes. We're working with two indexes. That's why the last query was 200 milliseconds versus 73 milliseconds. When MySQL had to do all that sorting, it has more data to work with. And we know that query's speed depends on how much data MySQL has to look at and work with. In this case, because at the end of the day, MySQL only has to deal with one post with one result, this query is lightning fast. And the, I was using the application SQL Pro to run this query. I, th I think that it, uh, the, the lowest number that it'll show is one millisecond. So it may have even been faster than one millisecond. Let's take a look at meta queries. Oh, and by the way, uh, with, the, with this query, just to further the point that it really it all comes down to having to do that sort and having to deal with, a, you know, having to sort 100,000 results. If we remove the group by, the order by, the limit here, uh, those are all things that, that cause MySQL to have to do some, some form of sorting, then this, this query takes a, a singular number of milliseconds. So just like the archive query, uh, it, it's really, uh, lightning fast, once you tell MySQL, once you have data, just send it to me. You don't need to sort it, you don't need to touch it. All right, moving on to meta queries. So a typical meta query leverages index columns, uh, the meta key and the post ID. Join happens on index columns. But as I mentioned before, meta value is not indexed, or at least out of the box. Looking at uh, a query, so I, um, I'm, I'm running a, a custom query here where the meta query is looking at the meta key of city and the meta value of Portland. And uh, I have, um, I added that meta key value combination to 99,999 posts. And this took about 410 milliseconds. So slower than the, the, the taxonomy the, yeah, it's slower than the taxonomy query, about, about twice as long, uh, and more than four times, about five times as long as, uh, as the archive query. What happens, so 99,999, the other post of my 100,000, I set the meta key to city and the meta value to Boston, 
So now MySQL only has to, only has one post to work with. So we're removing the sorting, right? How long is that query going to take? Any guesses? 340 milliseconds. What the heck? Now there's only one result. Why is this so slow? Why isn't it like a singular number of milliseconds? Because at the end of the day, MySQL still has to sort 100,000 results here. Before, since meta value is not an index column, MySQL pulls out all the results using the index columns. And it says, OK, I have 100,000 results. Now let me get the meta, meta values for all those. And I'm going to go row by row and see if the meta value matches. And so even though in, in my second case, there's only one post with the meta value of Boston, it still has to look at and access 100,000 results. Because there are 100,000 posts where the meta key is city. So when it comes to meta queries, a query is either fast or slow, not based on the uniqueness of the result set, but on the uniqueness of the meta key, because the meta key is what's indexed. When there's only one post with the city key, so instead of one post with the meta value, matching a meta value, if there was only one post matching the city key, that query only takes one millisecond. Which segues us into a really important part of, uh, of database performance, which is planning and data architecture. Know thy data. Understand what the data is going to look like, not just today, but also tomorrow. And if you're working on an open source plugin, you have to operate assuming the worst. We'll talk about some, some strategies very soon on how we can help meta queries perform uh, a little bit better. Uh, just briefly, I want to touch on search queries. Simply put, searches in WordPress are not scalable. If you have a very large site in WordPress, I recommend you use something external to run searches in WordPress. And I'll, I'll point out a, an option or two later on. OK, the fun part of the program, refactoring. So the first way that we can refactor our code is to add date limitations. Thinking about that archive query, we're using the type status date index. Then we're sorting, so we're filtering by type and status, sorting by date. We figured out that what takes the most time when running that query is doing that sort, taking 100,000 posts, sorting them all by date, and then throwing away 99,990 9, 9, of the results. So how do we get that result set, that 100,000 number, down? So here, here's an example of something you might, you might build. Let's say you have a widget in, your, in the sidebar of your site that shows like the five latest posts. If you were doing just the basic query, basic archive query like we were looking at before, you, and you have 100,000 posts on your site, you know how long that's going to take. Uh, I mean, your database server might be faster than my laptop, but you, you have a good idea of that that's going to be a slower query than you really want it to be. But think about your data. Is there any chance that in those five posts, there would be a post that's older than X number of days or X number of months? Because if you have 100,000 posts on your site, maybe those posts go back 10 years, 15 years. Is a post from 12 years ago ever going to show up there? No. So why are you making MySQL sort it? So if you were to add, take that, that, the query that that widget is running and add a date query on it with a safe range, let's say that you can say beyond any shadow of a doubt that the oldest a post would ever be in there is four or five days old. So what if you pick a safe range like six months and say, OK, I only want to look at the most recent six months of data here, even that, if your data is spans back 10, 12 years, is going to trim that result set considerably. Uh, here's an example of what that might look like in code. So you have your query. The little ellipsis just indicates 
whatever's in the query previously. We're going to add a date query here, and we're going to say after uh, negative six months is is just a, a shortcut to saying six months ago. So we're saying only look at the results from the past six months. You might turn that 73 millisecond query into a two millisecond query or a three millisecond query because now MySQL doesn't have to look at and sort 100,000 results. Maybe it only has to look at and sort 1,000 results or maybe even better, maybe only a few hundred. If this was a, a taxonomy query or a meta query, now you're, in the, in the end, you're probably talking the same amount of result time, like three or four milliseconds, but you're going from 200 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds to get down there. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a great option for, for cutting query, query time, database query time, on uh, queries that when you step back and think about it, you, you start to get an idea of why, why am I looking at 99% of this content when I know I'm never going to need it? Uh, just a, a real world example where I've used this, I, in the, uh, so this was for uh, a, a news media client. I was building them a homepage curation tool and there was a like, search autocomplete field where they could search for posts and, and curate them. And these searches, and I, for this purpose, I was just using WordPress's core search. These searches were taking over 10 seconds to run. They had millions of posts in the database. And these searches were taking over 10 seconds to run. I was like, well, how, how can I speed these up? And I, and I thought of this, and I reached out to my client, and I said, would you ever put a, a content on the home page that's, that's like older than six months? And they're like, no. The content on the home page is only ever going to be within the last few days. I'm like, OK. So if I add like a 30-day limit, no, that's never going to confuse anyone, right? Nobody's ever going to search for content that's older than 30 days to put on the home page. No, why would they do that? That's, that's ridiculous. This is a news site. Uh, so I did that, and those, those searches were instant. They were one or two milliseconds. So that cut it down from over 10 seconds to basically no time at all. Next tip, add an index to meta value. Uh, this is easier said than done, but uh, we can lean on our friends at Automatic who run WordPress.com VIP. They do this on, uh, for, their, for their larger sites on one of their platforms. Uh, if you uh, download the presentation, I'll bring the URL up again later if you, if you didn't go to it. Uh, this is a link to, to their code. Uh, what, they, what they do is they're adding an index on the meta key and then the first 100 characters of the meta value. Here's why you can't just add an index to meta value. Meta value can be absurdly large. I forget what the limit is. I want to say it's something like 2 gigs. It might even be 16 gigs. It can be massive. You can't index that. MySQL just won't let you. Uh, and if MySQL let you, you would take down your database server if you had any... any uh, any values that were anywhere near that size. Uh, so, but if you're running a meta query, you probably aren't going to be typing out some, you know, absurdly long value. The first hundred characters, uh, and that's completely arbitrary. They say as much in their code. Somebody pulled that out of a hat. Uh, is more than enough to to do probably every meta query that you would you would ever need to run. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of, especially on a large site, a lot of meta, post meta gets written. So uh, this can slow down your, your database rights and thus the performance in the admin. It's something to be aware of. Um, probably tested in a staging environment before rolling it out to production and affecting people's lives in the real world. Next refactoring tip, get creative with meta keys. So again, a tip for, uh, for meta queries. Remember when we looked at that meta query, the problem that we were facing is that we had 100,000 posts all having the same meta key. Even though meta values might have differed, the problem is that they all have the same meta key. So you can increase your uniqueness, limit your cardinality by getting creative with your meta keys. So as an example, let's think about post relationships. Uh, you're, you have two posts, and you want to store a relationship between them, like these are related posts. 
And so the way that you might have done it is to have a meta key of related posts and then store a value of the post ID, like one, two, three, four, five. Instead of storing that key value combination, you can store the key related post underscore post ID, so related post one, two, three, four, five, and then put anything you want in the value. And now you're, you have a much more uniqueness to that meta key and your meta queries are going to be significantly faster. Uh, it's not gonna work in every case, but this, this comes up quite a bit. I find that this, uh, this can be a really creative solution to, uh, to cutting down meta, meta query time. Uh, next is to leverage caching. WordPress has a, a cache system called its Transients API, which is a, a persistent cache that WordPress has out of the box. Uh, the Transients API might store data to the database, it might store data to an external object cache if you have one installed, like Memcache or Redis, uh, but it's guaranteed to always be persistent. Uh, here's an example of what that code might, might look like to leverage the, the Transients API. You have a cache key, you load the transient with the, that cache key. If, the, if the, the transient doesn't exist, if the cache doesn't exist, then you, you generate, you run your query, you generate that data. Notice here I'm, I'm calling fields IDs. When caching data, you don't want to cache like entire objects or entire result sets. Uh, you just want to cache a minimal amount of data, the, the minimal amount that removes the heavy lift. In this case, once we have the IDs, we can inflate those later to um, using get post, uh, and, um, and then we don't have to worry about caching these, these massive WP post objects. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're storing this query for, for 10 minutes. Um, but ideally, you would even cache indefinitely and then only clear the cache when the data actually changes. You can't take advantage of this always. Sometimes the, the data is just a little bit too, too fluid for that. You can't, um, you can't really surgically say whether or not the, the cache should have changed. But in cases where you can, uh, there's an action clean post cache, which will fire any time that WordPress knows it needs to clean a post cache, uh, and it passes the post ID and the post through that action. So here we might run some logic determining if the cache should actually clear, and then once it does, delete our transient. The problem with caching is that you end up with an unlucky user here and there. Uh, somebody goes to your site, there is no cache, so they're the ones who trigger the, uh, the heavy query that, that takes a long time. So if you don't want any unlucky users to have to do this, uh, one approach is to kick off an asynchronous task using WP cron to pre-warm that cache behind the scenes. Let the server have to be the, the unlucky user who warms that cache up. A very simple example of what this might look like. So on save post, uh, you know, here we'd, we'd probably run some, some logic to determine if we should actually uh, pre-warm the cache as a result of this post saving. Um, but then we run WP schedule single event. This is, this is not going to schedule a recurring event, just a single event. I'm setting it to five seconds from now. In other words, like right after this request finishes, run this. Uh, and it's firing the action warm cache. Uh, and then on uh, when the cron runs, when warm cache fires, then I can run my laborious query and, and cache the results there. Uh, since we know that meta queries are slower than taxonomy queries, for the most part, we can uh, convert meta queries to taxonomy queries from time to time. Sometimes meta may make more sense as taxonomy terms. I, I, I think one thing that gets in a lot of people's way is the admin presentation. I have a meta box with a text field, that should go to post meta. It doesn't have to. You can save that to a taxonomy term instead. You control the data. So, you know, know thy data and uh, store it in the way that's going to make sense for using it down the road. Uh, another trick related to this that I like to employ is hidden taxonomies. So taxonomies that have uh, public set to false and, and or show UI set to false. The users using the WordPress admin have no idea that this taxonomy exists it only exists behind the scenes, 
And uh, then on, on front end queries, we can use it, we can take advantage of it. Um, but uh, it, it might make sense to, to do that to duplicate some data that we know we can do a faster taxonomy query than we could a meta query or, or something else. Uh, and then uh, sometimes you'll just encounter a situation where MySQL is not well suited for the job. Uh, search queries were one of those examples, um, but there, there are others. Really complex queries where you just can't help that it's going to be a meta query with a lot of rows. Elasticsearch is a dedicated search engine, but not just for keyword searches. Don't think about like Google's text box. I type in anything I want. It's also good for structured searches. Every database query that we've looked at so far, I would call a structured search. Find all posts where the post type is post and the post status is blah, blah, blah. That's a structured search. Elasticsearch is really fast with this. And Elasticsearch and MySQL uh, are pretty complementary software titles, you know, software platforms. Um, we use them side by side all the time and, and find that when MySQL can't get a job done, Elasticsearch is, is really good at it. Uh, some five or six years ago, I put together a couple of plugins. Uh, one's called SearchPress, the other's ESWP Query. That, that help you do that. Um, so that's all I got. We've got five minutes for questions. Uh, anyone have any questions? Yes. Um. What's your opinion of the search cache plugins that utilize MySQL um, rather than Elasticsearch so they can run like shared servers, et cetera, to build a cache table to search? Yeah, so the question is what about, uh, for the purposes of the video, what about search plugins that leverage MySQL do, you know, perhaps like keyword indexing tables uh, instead of having to use an external uh, another service that you have to maintain, support, make sure it's running, yada, 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 like Elasticsearch. Uh, personally, I've not used them. Uh, it's, it's a great idea, and if it works for you, then that's, that's awesome. Uh, I, I recommend giving it a shot, and um, at, at the end of the day, all, all of these things, WordPress and all the plugins, these are all tools in the tool belt. Find the tool that works best for, for your particular use case and you know, run with it. Um, so I, I've looked at, I think it was, it's WP Search, I want to say, is, uh, is one that, that does that. It creates additional tables and it, it does keyword indexing. Um, I, I, I haven't, you know, again, I haven't used it myself, but at a high level, it looked pretty solid. I saw another hand up here. Yeah. Um, this is something that's uh, sort of, you know, I don't know if you're going to are queries where I need to order by a meta value that may or may not exist. Um, so like, uh, for instance, like ordering a query of users by like a, a meta value that's like is active or something and then like some users have that meta field, some don't. Um, have you like run into that and found a good way to make those queries efficient? Um, I tend to like have to um, use some use some like inject some custom SQL to like do left joins on the meta table and that kind of thing. It gets gets ugly really fast. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the the question is uh, how about. Uh, sorting by meta values that might not exist, uh, performant ways to, to accomplish that. Um, this is another situation of know thy data. Sometimes it'll, it'll make sense to uh, always store a meta value on that key, whether you want it to exist or not, and then running like a WP CLI query, some sort of bulk operation to backfill all posts that, that might need that, uh, so that you um, so that you know that there's always going to be a value there. Sometimes you know just an empty string, knowing that's there is is all you need. Uh, if you know that your result set is going to be relatively small, another option is to do that, that sorting and, and filtering in PHP. Just return the full data set. If you're not returning 100,000 rows like I was, and you're instead returning like you know, maybe 100, uh, it's, it's fine to do that, that sorting and limiting in PHP. And you know, it'll probably be a lot easier 
a lot easier and probably more performant than trying to do an additional database query. Um, uh, and those are probably my best suggestions. Does that help? Yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Yes. Um, the examples you gave are great with the queries and the timing. So if we're out in the wild on our own project, how do we see what query is being used? What are some tools we can use to see what query is being used and how do we time it? That's a great question. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned like some plugins that you can use to look at real world queries. So the question is, what, what tools can we use to look at database queries in the wild so that we can pull them out, we can benchmark, et cetera? Um, one of my favorite WordPress plugins is Query Monitor by John Blackburn. Uh, that's what I use to crib these queries from, from my site. Uh, the debug bar plugin is another option that will list all your database queries. Um, you can also, if you can connect to your database server, the command show process list or show full process list will show you all the queries that are running at a given time. And so you, you can pretty easily identify the really bad ones. Since most queries are like just a few singular milliseconds, you'd, you have to like hit the command at the exact right time to see that it's running. Because again, it's like that, 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 that. Uh, but the really bad queries that take multiple seconds to run, it's pretty easy to target them when you when you do a show full process list. Um, and uh, uh, Xdebug can do profiling. That will give you um, a lot more information than, than you need, but it'll help you uh, target database queries as well. And uh, external services like New Relic, for instance, um, are just immensely helpful for that. New Relic can do full page profiling on, uh, it'll, you know, you can set targets and say any page that takes longer than a second to run you know, flag it, and it'll do a, a full stack profile of what took time in that request. Like, it'll go into which functions in PHP took the most time, and it'll pull out which database queries or which external API services. Uh, anytime I, I have a page running slow, if I have New Relic active, that's the first place that I look. We're probably about out of time, but any more questions? Try to squeeze one more in before they kick me out. Awesome. Well, I'm here all day and I'll be at the after party. I'd love to answer, you know, any more questions you might have that come up throughout the day. Thank you all very much. And uh, again, there's the, the URL to the presentation at the bottom.